How we doing everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Master Drum Whiskey Room. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. If this is your first time here and you're looking for the latest in whiskey and bourbon news and reviews, you have come to the right place. Please think about hitting that subscribe button below and that bell notification so you know when I'm putting out a new video. So today, I have a really exciting whiskey to try out from Sagamore Spirits, which is a pretty new distillery that opened only last year. So let's get ready to get into this one. So today we're gonna to be reviewing uh, Sagamore Spirit Cask Strength Rye, because I love some cask strength uh, whiskeys, especially ryes. So a little bit about Sagamore Spirit. Sagamore Spirit Distillery opened on April 21st in 2017 in the Port Covington neighborhood on Baltimore's waterfront. The facility spans five acres and includes a distillery, uh, processing building, visitor center, restaurant, and an, even an event center as well. Production of Sagamore's rye whiskey is currently made at MGP, and that began on April 10th of 2017. So Sagamore Spirit launched uh, last year as a blend of two straight rye whiskeys, each with a different proportion of rye in the mash bill currently made to the company's spe uh, specifications at MGP. Founder Kevin Plank, uh, better known as the creator of Under Armour, uh, brought on former MGP master distiller Larry Ebersold to develop the recipe for the rye and oversee production. Uh, Ebersold will remain on board with the company to help ensure continuity of flavor, quality, as Sagamore begins distilling and aging the whiskey all by itself. The 22,000 square foot distillery houses nine 6,500 gallon fermenters, an 8,000 gallon beer well, and a 6,000 gallon mash cooker. There's both a 24 inch column still from Vendome and a 250 gallon pot still that will be used for research, new product development, and creating special releases. So part of the goal of Sagamore Spirit Distillery is to create a what they call a Maryland style rye. And a big part of this whiskey's lore is the limestone filtered spring water from Sagamore Farm, which is located about 22 miles away in Reisterstown, Maryland, which is trucked to the building and used for diluting their rye whiskeys. Sagamore Farm spring-fed water is added for just a touch of smoothness. 100% um, of both Sagamore's 82 proof rye and the cast strength rye, which is this one right here, uses this distinct water to build a distinct Maryland rye flavor profile. All the whiskey ages off-site at a 20,000 barrel barn in North Point, Maryland. And the final product is crafted to fill another corner of whiskey's uh, niche market. As we mentioned, that Maryland style rye, which is seen as a bit more sweet forward and of a less spicy rye. So as I mentioned, Sagamore Spirit right now is sourcing everything from MGP in Indiana, which is very well known for their rye mash bills. But Sagamore Spirit is really moving towards doing everything themselves, which is always a cool thing. Two distillers, Max Haim and Christopher Schultz, and director of quality Ryan Norwood will oversee production, eventually shifting to bottling 100% house-made whiskey. Though Sagamore Spirit president, Brian Treacy, has stated, we age to taste. Rather than a specific number of years, the company plans to age everything for at least four years uh, for consistency and flavor profile. Uh, he says, we are eager to taste the new flavors that emerge from the whiskey made and aged in Maryland. Our expert distilling team will perform quality checks throughout the aging process to learn how Maryland's flora and fauna interact with the whiskey in the barrels. So for those of you who don't know what flora and fauna is, flora and fauna means flowers and fawns, basically meaning how Maryland's natural environment uh, will impact their whiskey once they distill themselves rather than sourcing from MGP. All right, let's get into this cast strength rye. Now, while you guys are taking a closer look at the bottle, just a couple of cool notes. This was a proud winner of the double gold from the prestigious San Francisco Spirits Competition. Uh, this is a blend of low and high rye whiskeys from MGP with that Maryland limestone spring water added to proof. Uh, there's no age statement, but according to the distillery, it's about four to five years old. Uh, so this Sagamore Spirit, as you can see, it comes in at 111.4 proof, which is 55.7% uh, alcohol. This is batch 1A, bottle 576. So let's get into it here. I'm gonna pop it open. Woo, that was in there. Oh, that definitely has a nice rye spice there on the cork. All right, let's get a good pour. <laughs> That's a nice pour, but gotta love the cast strength rye stuff. All right, so let this open up a little bit since it's cast strength. 
All right, guys, so this has been sitting about, you know, maybe five, six minutes has been swirling around here. So before we get into it here, I wanna take a look at the color because it's a super, super nice color. Really nice golden, honey, amber, dark amber color. Really, really nice. And this stuff is sticking to the glass like glue. I have a feeling it's gonna be really mouth coating, so super excited. All right, guys, let's get into the nose. Here we go. Wow, immediately, immediately on the nose, dark chocolate, right away. Wow, now it's getting, um, I'm getting a really nice dark fruit character in there. Wow, it's like dark chocolate covered blueberries. All right, now that's kind of dissipating and now you're getting that nice rye, uh, that rye spice on the nose. This is a really nice, uh, a warming kind of, I mean, I haven't even taken a sip yet, but just on the nose, it's, it has these notes of warming baking spices and cinnamon and clove and there's some dark honey in there. It's, it's a lot sweeter on the nose than I would think for a cast strength rye. But as we learned in the introduction, um, this blend that they're trying to create, this Maryland style rye, is supposed to be more sweet forward than spicy uh, for a rye. And on the nose, I definitely think that holds true. Yeah, you're getting really nice dark chocolate, dark fruit, chocolate covered blueberries. There's this underlaying caramel though throughout the whole thing and those vanilla and baking spices. And just behind there, you're getting some nice rye spice. All right, let's go into the palette. Super excited. Cheers, everyone. Wow. Woo. Wow, I just got rye smack there. <laughs> wow, the finish is still going. So always that first sip, what I like to do is see how it kind of coats the palate. This is super mouth coating. It's already giving me a really nice long finish, which, is, which I always love. But really right up on the front, you're getting a lot of caramel. You're getting that fruitiness that I was getting on the nose as well. Let's go in for that second sip. Wow, that's, ooh, that's really nice. Those blueberry and dark chocolate notes that I was getting on the nose, it's translating to the palate, especially on the front. As it goes back, it's turning to more all fruitiness, and then right on the back end, you're getting that, you're getting this black pepper spiciness to it. It's really nice. The, I think the cast strength and the proof, it, it's really kind of taking you on a nice ride. It's, it's really good. All right, let's go in for one more last sip here. Yeah, that, that, fruity, that, fruity, uh, that fruity flavor profile up front is so good. It's like blueberries and a little bit of that chocolate. It's got this overlying caramel vanilla spice to it, those baking spices, and then right on the end, you're getting a nice black pepper and a spice kick. If they were going for a more sweeter rye than spicy, I think they definitely hit that mark. You're still getting those rye notes, so if you're a rye purist, I think you would really like the finish on it, but up front and throughout the palate, as it works its way down, it's, uh, it's definitely on the sweeter side. But a very enveloping sweetness, really nice, dark, robust flavors. It's a really nice rye. Now, I got this bottle for, I think it was about 65 bucks with tax, and I would say it's totally worth it. Um, I've seen rise from other craft distillers uh, that aren't even cast strength or even higher in price. So I think for this to try it, such a really great flavor profile. I think it's definitely worth it, or at least if not for to buy a bottle, definitely worth going to the distillery if you're in Maryland or if maybe a local bar has it to try this stuff. It's, it's really, really great. Now I'm curious actually how this would go up against another one of my favorite ryes that are on the sweeter side, which is the Knob Creek Cast Strength rye that they released this year. Let's find out. 
All right, guys, so here we are, another impromptu mashup <laughs> between the Knob Creek Cat Strength Drive from this year, which is one of my favorites. I love this stuff against this new Sagamore Spirit Cat Strength Drive that I just tried. Both, to me, are on the sweeter side. Um, the Knob Creek comes in at 119.6 proof, uh, and this was, I think, about $75, whereas the Sagamore Spirit Cat Strength, which is 111.4 proof, comes in at about $65, so maybe $10 to $15 less, depending on where you get it. So let's go to the nose and see how these two compare. The Knob Creek Cast Strength Rye, and you can see this has opened up a little bit, so it's definitely gotten sweeter as it's come down, so all this on the nose is really all vanilla, caramel, there's that hint of rye spice on it, Really, really nice. You definitely get that proof coming through too. There's, I mean, a bit, a hint of rye spice on there on the nose for me with this. On the Sagamore, see this one to me, you're getting uh, more fruitier flavors. You're getting caramel and vanilla, but the dark fruit notes on this are really punching through that blueberry and that dark chocolate. But the one thing I'm getting on this that I'm not getting on this is a rye uh, scent. You're really getting that nice rye uh, scent to it, so. All right, let's go to the palette. Here we go. First, the Knob Creek. Mm. so good. Caramel, vanilla. You get a really, you get a really nice barrel char flavor on this too. It's, it's more wood forward on this one, which you know I really enjoy. On the Sagamore, the Sagamore to me is fruitier, and I think has more traditional rye notes uh, in this one. This I think is, is way sweeter, and it comes off more almost as a bourbon to me. I mean, there's a hint of rye on the end of this, but not as much as the Sagamore. Um, I think both are great bottles, but if you like a sweeter, a really sweet rye, a rye that maybe has more caramel, vanilla, more on the bourbon side with a little bit of rye on it, then you'll really, really love this. Um, if you like some more traditional rye notes, maybe something a little bit different, something that's a little bit more fruit forward, something that's, um, has a really nice black pepper and rye spice stick on the end, then I think the Sagamore would be really, really great for you. Both are amazing rye, and I think that you could go with you could go right with either one. But for this purpose, for the Sagamore, I think rye enthusiasts would really, really love this bottle. And if you find it, I guarantee that when you pick it up, you will love this. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining the Mass and Drum Whiskey Room today, and I really appreciate you sticking around for this great review of Sagamore Spirit Cast Strength Rye, a definite winner in my book. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit that like button. Uh, if you could, find me on Instagram. I love chatting with everybody, and you can now also find me on Twitter. Really appreciate you stopping by, and like I always say, it is not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers, everyone, and I'll see you next time.